Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you all today. I hope you are doing well. So for today's reading, I wanted to look into like your person of interests, head and heart space. Um, so basically, what are they thinking and what are they feeling now? Um, this could be for like a no contact situation or not. It doesn't have to be. Um, just like I said, looking at their thoughts and their feelings about you and about your relationship at this point in time. So um, I have three decks of cards for you guys to choose from today. Deck number one is the Santa Muerte Tarot, and I have this selenite bar on top of that. Deck number two is the Tarot of Pagan Cats. It's the mini version. Um, and with that, we have Bloodstone. And then deck number three is the Tarot of Sexual Magic um, with the Rose Quartz point. And just so you're aware, um, some of the imagery in this particular deck is a little bit spicy. Um, just throwing that out there. Uh, I don't want anybody to be like surprised by it. Um, but yeah, those are your options for today. You can, you know, pause the video if you want to, meditate on your person. And all of my links, as usual, are in the description if you want to check those out. I offer personal readings, I'm on Instagram, all of that fun stuff. And um, yeah, if you're not ready yet, you can pause, take your time, but I am going to go ahead and get started with group number one, okay? All right, so group one, those of you who chose the selenite bar with the Santa Muerte tarot, let's find out what your person is thinking and feeling. All right, we have the nine of pentacles coming out right away. Justice, the world, the fool, the empress, eight of cups. We have a lot of uh, majors here so far. Ten of swords, king of wands, and the four of wands. Okay. Give me guys a second to look over these cards here. Um, I think I want to pull maybe one or two Oracle cards as well. Let me see. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use this Oracle deck. This is the Mausolea uh, Oracle of Souls. I don't think I've used this deck at all in any of my uh, readings on this channel. So let's see what it wants to add to this. What is group one's person thinking and feeling now? Osiris, God King of Duat, Commitment, Acquisition, Responsibility. And then we also have Eresh Kegal, Queen of Shadows, Wrath, Instability, and Suspicion. Very interesting cards here. Um, okay, let me just stick those right there. <laughs> okay, so group number one. The first thing that I'm getting here is it, it, it seems to me like this person that you're thinking about, um, well, first of all, I'm getting the impression that there is a lot of distance between the two of you. You may not be in separation necessarily. However, it feels like emotionally, um, there's just a lot of space between you guys and, you know, communication might not be super consistent 
or there might just be an issue with like having meaningful communication with this person. Okay. Does that make sense? Because the nine of pentacles here to me, like this is a pretty solitary kind of energy. It's not like an energy of loneliness or isolation, but when we're talking about relationships, a lot of times this card represents somebody who's single or, you know, somebody who's just really focused on themselves, doing their own thing. Um, it's, it's really about like independence and self-sufficiency. Okay. Um, I see with this card, like somebody who's just kind of having a good time, like doing their thing, doing what they want to do, focusing in on their goals and what makes them happy. Um, and, and, and not particularly, uh, tuned in or, or I guess I should say this is like the energy of someone who isn't super focused on relationships right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, we also have justice here, which this card is about balance and reciprocation. Um, it can represent karma as well. It, it, it really relates to the idea that, you know, for every action, there is a relative consequence. Um, this is kind of interesting here because... I feel like somebody made a decision to, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I want to say this. I, I feel like this distance that's between the two of you didn't necessarily happen by accident. I feel like it was intentional. I feel like somebody made the decision to, you know, kind of... Um, either like call off this relationship or somebody said, you know, I think we should, you know, step away from each other a little bit, take some time out to ourselves, something like that. Is this making sense? Um, we have the world here as well. This card is about wholeness and completion. It can represent endings, cycles, um, something coming to a close. So yeah, kind of, kind of emphasizing that idea that, um, your relationship to this person at this point in time might technically be like over. Um, and if that's the case for you specifically, like you will know this, this, this isn't saying that, you know, this person is turning their back on your connection without saying anything or, or anything like that. Um, I feel like if this if, if this particular reading is applicable to you, like, you will already have an awareness of, of this that's going on right now. Um, like, this energy of an ending should not surprise you. Um, and, and actually, it's kind of interesting because following the world card, we have the fool. The world is number 21. Yeah, 21, it is the last of the major arcana, and then the full is zero. It is the first of the major arcana. So it's like an ending followed by a brand new beginning. The full really talks about optimism and enthusiasm and taking risks and embracing the unknown, like embarking on a brand new adventure. And then we also have here the Empress, which this card relates to like wish fulfillment and creativity. Um, it talks to me a lot about like making something new. Um, and it's also a very, I want to say it's a very like loving sort of energy because the Empress is typically seen as like a provider, a very nurturing, loving kind of figure, like a, a maternal sort of figure. Um, or she can also represent like a, a, a wife in some cases, um, like the divine feminine. Do you know what I'm saying? Following that, we have the Eight of Cups, which is about walking away from something, leaving a situation behind. There is a sense of sadness with this card. So a lot of times it's like you might not really want to walk away from something, but you might feel like you have to for whatever reason. Um, and then the Ten of Swords here, this is loss and grief and... <sighs> It, it, it tends to signify like some kind of painful, difficult ending, okay? Um, very heavy energy. The King of Wands, this is 
a very fiery, passionate kind of energy in contrast to the Eight of Cups and the Ten of Swords. This card to me is like, like very enthusiastic, very optimistic. Um, the King of Wands relates a lot to creativity and manifestation, and he's also a very driven, very ambitious kind of individual. You know, he's somebody who knows what he wants, he knows what he has to do to get what he wants, and he's willing to do whatever he needs to do in order to achieve his goals and, you know, live his best life. Um, that's the kind of figure that the King of Wands is. And then the last card that we have here is the Four of Wands, which the energy of this card tends to be very uplifting and very celebratory. Um, it can represent unions, partnerships, togetherness, um, and also balance, stability, particularly when we're talking about relationships. Um, it is considered to be like a marriage card in some cases. It can represent soul level connections as well. And then we have these two Oracle cards which are very, very different from each other. And it's interesting because like this whole spread has a lot of like contrasting energies, I feel. Um, you know, we have some, some pretty heavy energies, like particularly with the Eight of Cups and the Ten of Swords and, and this card. Um, but we also have some very positive energies coming through here as well. So I'm kind of getting the sense that the person you're thinking of, the way they're really feeling inside might not line up with like what they're presenting. Does that make sense? Like they might be acting very differently from how they truly feel and like what they're really thinking. Does Do you know what I'm saying? Um... And I feel like for a lot of you, your person might be letting on that they are like doing really good and they're, you know, having fun, having a good time, doing their thing, you know, just focused on their goals and, and doing what makes them happy. They might be letting on that they're not real bothered about whatever has happened between the two of you in the past. Um... Or, or something like that, you know, I, I, I just get the impression that this person is presenting to the outside world that everything is fine and dandy with them, but I feel like the reality is that they are really, um, I, I don't want to say stuck, but I feel like they still have a pretty strong attachment, like, to your connection, and they're just, they're, they're trying to hide that. They're trying to conceal that, okay? I feel like the reality of this situation is that this, this person is missing you. I feel like this person deep down has love for you, you know, being represented by the Empress right in the center of this spread. Um... This person certainly has an emotional attachment to you. I feel like this person is perhaps kind of regretful of like something that happened between you guys, you know, particularly if they were the ones who initiated like the, this distance or this separation or whatever, this ending that seems to have occurred. Um, I feel like they're kind of regretting letting you go or letting this connection go in some way or another. Um, and there's like a lot of pain and, and sadness that's going along with that. Um, and I get the sense that they're feeling kind of stuck right now because it's like they're caught, it's like they can't really make their mind up about what they should do next. Um, on the one hand, I feel like there is this part of them that wants to come back towards you and wants to try to, like, make amends somehow um, and, you know, rebalance the scales and, and try to fix things with you and, and like, restabilize your relationship. But then there's this other side of them that's very stubborn that's being very resistant to that idea because I feel like this person maybe has a tendency to be kind of prideful or like they don't like admitting when they're wrong or when they made a mistake about something. I feel like 
they don't want to admit that they regret this choice that they made. They don't want to admit that they were that that they were wrong essentially in walking away from your connection and and you know trying to pursue something different because I feel like this person has tried to move forward from your connection. Like I feel like this person has tried to release it and 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 move on from it, but they have not been able to successfully do that. Um and they're feeling like maybe I should not have walked away from this. Maybe I should have made more of an effort to like work things out or maybe I should have invested more in that connection. You know, it just seems to me like they're re really regretting something that they did in relation to you um, or regretting something that they didn't do, perhaps, you know, depending on um, depending on your specific situation. I feel like uh, for some of you, this person made that decision to end things or or to pull back. And for others of you, you know, you may have been the one to make that decision because they were not making an equal effort. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but whatever the case, this person is regretting the way that things have panned out. And despite that, they, it's, it's like their ego is really blocking them from just coming forward and being honest about what they really think and how they really feel about you and about this whole situation. Because I feel like as far, as far as their thoughts are concerned, you know, like I've already mentioned, they are wishing they had done things differently. They are wishing they had made more of an effort with you, all of that. Um, they seem to be thinking like, there was something more to our connection and I took it for granted. You know, I, I didn't appreciate it like I should have. And I wish I could have that opportunity to do that. Um... But again, there's this, there's a lot of conflict here. It's almost like this person is locked in a stalemate. Like, like, in spite of, you know, this desire to fix things and this desire to come back towards you and, and like this love that this person still has towards you and this emotional attachment that they still have to, to you, they're just so, they seem so stubborn and they seem like they're so unwilling to admit their faults and just be honest. And I think that ego might be a, a big obstacle for this person like their own ego their own pride wanting to be right wanting to you know seem like they have it all together all the time do you know what I'm saying but in reality it's like there's so much inner turmoil within like like inside this person you know, there's, like I said, there's love here, there's passion here, there's attraction, there's attachment, that, that all things that they're feeling towards you. And, and going back to this four of wands, especially, I think this person, especially since the two of you have like kind of been apart, um, I think this person has really come to realize that there was something more to your connection that they were taking for granted. There was something special about it, something unique about it that they weren't able to see at the time. And and now that there's this distance between you, they're able to pick up on that. Um, but this person is just so blocked, unfortunately. And for that reason... Um, it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen next. I know that's not really what this reading is supposed to be about, but, um, I just feel like I should mention that the energy of this particular connection, I, I see it remaining fairly stagnant for a while. Um, you know, at this point in time, uh, 
I'm not really seeing a lot of potential for things to change very much between the two of you. You know, moving forward, like later down the road, there it is possible that things might become unblocked and the two of you might be able to come back together and work together on things. But as of right now, like for the foreseeable future, as far as I can tell, um, unfortunately, it just doesn't look like much much is going to be happening within this connection, I'm afraid. So um, group number one, that is what I'm getting for you guys as far as like what's going on in this person's head and in their heart space right now. Just a lot of conflict and a lot of contrasting thoughts and desires and emotions, unfortunately. Um, hopefully your person will be able to sort things out and unblock themselves, you know, move, move forward from like their own ego. Um, but, but that's going to take time. So, um, yeah, group one, I think that's going to do it for you guys today. I hope that this resonated with you. I hope this was interesting and that you enjoyed. Um, I really appreciate you guys joining me today. I hope I see you next time. And we are going to move on now to group number two. So if you chose group two, the uh, Tarot of Pagan Cats with the Bloodstone, let's find out what your person is thinking and feeling right now. So first card we have here is the Queen of Wands. It's been a long time since I used this deck and I kind of forgot like how tiny these cards are. Um, Ten of Pentacles. I think they're really cute, though. The Sun. Oh, these are all really good cards so far. Let's see. Let's see what else comes out for us. The Knight of Wands. Nine of Cups. Wow. The Chariot. Two of Wands. Okay, let me get a couple more of these. Six of Cups. Eight of Cups. Hmm. And I am going to grab one or two Oracle cards from uh, this deck. This is the Oracle of Souls. Let's see if there's anything that they want to add. To this before we get started. Okay, so we have two cards that came out here. We have, first of all, Anubis, Arbiter of Truth. I love this card. If you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I work with Anubis, love him. Um, anyway, uh, Anubis, preservation, neutrality, obligation. And then we also have here the Traveler, Keeper of the Crossroads, Restlessness, Independence, and Appraisal. Okay, interesting. So give me a second here to look these cards over. I mean, overall, I'm definitely getting a lot of really positive loving happy vibes from this spread it seems to me like you and whoever it is that you're thinking about right now it seems like you guys have a pretty good thing going on um i feel like for some of you this may be a connection that is still relatively new for others of you okay let me let me back up a little bit and rephrase for some of you i feel like this thing is still pretty new and you guys might still be kind of in the process of getting to know each other. But if that's not the case, then I get the impression that this is probably a connection that's pretty well established. Okay, so it's like it, there's there's like a couple possibilities here. Um, I feel like for the majority of you, this is this is a fairly new connection for a smaller number of you. This seems to me like something that 
you are already seriously involved in, you know, this could be like your current partner or something like that, or, or like a really good friend that you're thinking about, um, moving things forward in some way, you know what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, so let me just go through all of these cards and tell you guys a little bit about what they mean and, and, and show them to you so you can see them a bit better. Um, so first of all, we have the Queen of Wands here. This card is all about manifestation and creativity. The Queen of Wands is a very fiery, passionate kind of figure. She's the kind of person who knows what she wants. She knows how to get it. She's going to do whatever she needs to do in order to get it. Um, she's very determined and very ambitious. There's, there's a lot of willpower with this card. Um, and... You know, I also associate this card a lot with manifestation and wish fulfillment. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but manifestation and wish fulfillment as well. Um, the Ten of Pentacles here. This card relates to stability and security, particularly in the more like material aspects of our lives. So like this card can certainly signify... Um, like like a very fulfilling, very happy situation in terms of like your career. It can represent a lot of financial security and abundance. It can also represent like a very happy home life, family. I get a lot of familial energy with this card. Um, things going good at home. Things going good with your family and loved ones. We also have the sun here, which is really one of the most positive cards in the deck. Um, a little bit similar to the queen of wands. This card also relates to wish fulfillment. Um, it talks to me about like just joy and, and warmth and radiance. And it can also represent clarity, like illumination. Things, you know, things being brought to light in some cases. Um... In, I, I, I feel like, you know, just from these first three cards alone, I feel like the person you're thinking of has so much love for you. It's like this person has such a strong emotional attachment to you. This is someone who really genuinely cares about you. This is someone who, like, like, like you really just make this person happy. And I feel like this person has big plans for your relationship. They have a lot of hopes and, and dreams that they want to see come about for the two of you. Um, the Knight of Wands is kind of similar to the Queen as well. Um, again, this is fire and passion and ambition. The Knight of Wands is definitely a very action-oriented card. Um, it speaks to me of forward movement and enthusiasm, optimism, like going out and getting something that you want, like seizing something that you want. Right here in the center of the spread, we have the Nine of Cups, which is, again, this card has an association with, uh, you know, your your dreams becoming manifest, your, your wishes coming true, that sort of thing. Um, this card also talks to a lot about uh, emotional fulfillment and emotional satisfaction, feeling like all of your needs are being met. Um, the Chariot, a little bit similar to the Knight of Wands. This is, again, a very action-oriented card. It talks about ambition and drive. Um, it also can be a card of choice as well. Overcoming uh, overcoming adversity, like facing your obstacles head-on and, and having the determination to overcome them. Um, the Two of Wands... This card speaks to me of potential and opportunity. It can also represent like future planning. Um, as far as relationships go, this card definitely signifies like a lot of potential between two people. And it can definitely represent that, you know, two people might be um, basically planning, making plans for their future together, planning out their relationship, what, what they want out of this and where they want it to go. Um, the Six of Cups is associated with memories, nostalgia, the past. Um, there's a very, very loving, very compassionate energy that I get with this card. It can be uh, representative of like soul level connections. You know, that association with the past can definitely indicate like a past life connection of some kind going on. Um, in, in this case, I'm really getting the sense that 
you make this person feel very comfortable and very safe and very like at home, you know, um, like you feel like home to this person. Your relationship feels very homey to this person. And then lastly, we have the eight of cups, which is very different from a lot of uh, this other energy here. The eight of cups is about like walking away from something or leaving a situation behind. You don't really want to, but you might have to for some reason. It might be necessary. Um, so there is kind of an energy of like sadness, remorse with the eight of cups, typically. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like... <laughs> Okay, um, this person is, how do I want to say this? This person's feeling very optimistic about your relationship, regardless of the current status or state of your relationship. This person's feeling very optimistic about the future. This person is really thinking about, you know, what they want from you and, and where they would like for this connection to go moving forward. Um, looking at this Oracle card, Anubis, um, I'm really getting, well, one of the keywords for this card is preservation. Um, and I'm really, in, in this context, I'm really getting a sense of like, persistence, perseverance with this card, dedication to something. Um, I think from your person's perspective, they see your connection as having the power to last over a long period of time. They see this connection as, you know, being something that is capable of you know, overcoming any obstacle. Like they feel as though the two of you can face anything and come out on top, basically. Do you know what I'm saying? They feel like what you have or what you could build together has that strength, it has that power. Does this make sense? Um, and then this other Oracle card, this is this is a little bit um a little bit weird. Restlessness, independence, appraisal. Um I, I feel like this isn't so much talking about this person's feelings and thoughts about you specifically, but I feel like this is kind of talking about like their perspective on your connection. It's like before this person got to know you or before this person met you, they felt very restless in their life. They felt like they maybe didn't really have um, a clear direction that they were going. They felt like, you know... I, I feel like deep down this person has always wanted a partner. This person has always wanted to have somebody to, you know, build their life with and share their life with. I feel like that's something that, again, deep down, like at their core, that's something that they've always kind of wanted, but they weren't sure if they were going to ever actually achieve that or have that. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and so there was this sense of like restlessness and and kind of directionlessness <laughs> like like they just felt as though they were just kind of wandering in 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 their life and feeling kind of lonely and and all of that um until they met you and got to know you and they realized pretty quickly that there was something special about your relationship and I feel like this person really wants to preserve this connection no matter what I feel like this person wants to you know do whatever they need to do in order to make this last okay um it kind of feels to me like this person does in some way already see you or think of you as like part of their family. And this doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, I, I think of you like the brother or the sister that I never had or whatever. That's not what this is talking about necessarily. Um, you know, in relationships, like when when you find the person that you want to share your life with and build your life with, you, you tend to start thinking of that person as part of your family as well. 
you know, um, especially if, you know, you're going to start living together, especially if you're, you know, considering starting a family of your own, you know what I'm saying? And so I feel like that's kind of the way that this person is thinking of you and perceiving you like you are someone that they consider their family or they want for you to become integrated into their family like they want for you to have a larger role in their in their life okay and actually this six of cups is kind of tying in with that idea as well because i think i mentioned this already but this card does have an association with childhood um so you know it, it can represent actual children um it can represent family um i feel like for some of you this person really wants to like have children with you or have a family with you something like that um they are seeing you really as life partner material, I feel. Somebody that they want to have by their side, like, forever. Like, that's that's how they're feeling about this right now. There's just a lot of love here. <laughs> There's a lot of love here, and... You know, I don't want to um, just like be repeating myself, but there's a lot of love here. And I feel like from their perspective, it's like you fulfill all of the wants and needs that they had. It's, it's like you're exactly what they were looking for. Like you are their ideal partner. That's how they're perceiving you. Um, you know, they might be taking a, an overly optimistic perspective in this situation you know what that's that's a little bit difficult to tell but right now you know that's their point of view that's how they're thinking about this and I think they also feel like they can be their their most authentic self with you like like I mentioned earlier, something about you, something about your connection makes them just feel comfortable and safe and like secure enough to just be themselves and I feel like they maybe haven't really had a lot of opportunities to just be themselves and just exist authentically in in the past like in some of their previous relationships do, do, does that make sense and they just feel this real sense of freedom with you like you know I can breathe I can I can be who I am I can be who I was meant to be with you and I don't have to worry about being judged or, you know, and, and rejected or anything like that. Um, so yeah, depending on the specific circumstances of your relationship with this person right now, um, you know, if this is a relatively new connection and, and this person is feeling like very excited about this and like very much, you know, I am ready to move things forward. I am ready to get to know you better. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling on top of the world. I would say you can probably expect for this person to make some kind of move towards you relatively soon. Um, if this is somebody that you're already involved with, you know, I I see ton of potential here for this to go on for quite a long time. You know, I I see a lot of commitment with this person and I see that they are dedicated to your connection or they want to be dedicated to your connection. So, um I think I'm going to leave that there, group two. This was a very positive reading. Um, and it's possible that, you know, for some of you, this person hasn't expressed all of these emotions, or maybe they haven't expressed the extent of their emotions towards you, but I feel like they will if they haven't yet. Um, but you should be, I, I, I think most of you should have some awareness that they are very into you um, already. But yeah, that's that's what I have for you guys, group two. Um, I hope that this resonated with you. I hope it was interesting and that you enjoyed. Um, check out my links in the description if you want to. I really appreciate you guys joining me today, and I hope I see y'all next time. Bye! And lastly, those of you who chose... Uh, deck number three, the Tarot of Sexual Magic with the Rose Quartz Point. 
Let's find out what your person is thinking and feeling. That's a few too many cards. Okay. So we have the Three of Wands coming out. The Magician. Strength. Ten of Pentacles. Nine of Cups. Ace of Swords. Six of Swords. The Tower. of cups okay so um, let me just grab a couple of Oracle cards for you guys this is the Oracle of Souls deck see if there's anything that they want to add to this before we get started those group threes person thinking and feeling So we have Charon, the Ferryman, um, Necessity, Focus, Transition, and let me get one more here. else wants to come out from this deck so maybe we'll just leave it at the one card okay all right then um group three what is your person thinking and feeling currently so um for the most part i would say we have a lot of positive energy coming through here uh first of all the three of wands this card is about like opportunity and potential. I really see this as like the anything can happen card. Anything is possible. Um, it, it, it often represents like somebody looking out into the unknown, looking to embrace change, embrace um, like, like broaden their horizons in some way, opening themselves up to something new, something bigger. Um, the Magician is all about manifestation and creativity. It really talks about having the power and the resourcefulness to, you know, make whatever dreams you have into reality. The Strength card is here. This talks to me a lot about, you know, unconditional love. It is considered to be one of the soulmate cards. It also represents, you know, courage and overcoming adversity, overcoming obstacles, being willing to face obstacles head on. Um, the Ten of Pentacles, this is about abundance and prosperity. In this particular deck, there's also an association with like uh, overindulgence or excess in some cases. Um, but yeah, this really is about like stability and security and, you know, feeling like you have all of your wants and needs being met. Um, the Nine of Cups is associated with wish fulfillment. This is a very emotional kind of energy. There's there's a lot of like uh, a, a real sense of like emotional satisfaction that we get with this card. Um, 
it's uh, in that sense a little bit similar to the Ten of Pentacles. The Ace of Swords, Aces in general talk about new beginnings. The Ace of Swords in particular is usually indicative of like messages coming through, communication, uh, new ideas, that sort of thing. Um, the energy of this card can also be somewhat harsh though, somewhat cutting. In some instances, it can represent like cutting something out of your life or, or like detaching yourself from something or someone. The Six of Swords is really about conflict resolution. It talks to me a lot about reconciliation, people coming together, working together to solve problems, moving forward together. Um, the Tower. This is interesting because the Tower is usually about like um, some kind of sudden unexpected change happening, like something that really shakes you up and kind of forces you to pick up the pieces, rebuild, reevaluate in a pretty significant way. It can also represent like a situation just really going like, totally off the rails, like totally not according to plan or expectations or whatever. And then lastly, the King of Cups. This card is, it gives me a very loving, very compassionate kind of energy. Um, again, unconditional love. It tends to represent like very strong emotional bonds between people. And it can also represent like someone being very much in tune with their feelings, um, like, like very much connected to their emotions, um, not afraid of their emotions, not afraid to express their feelings, you know, that sort of thing. And then this Oracle card, the Ferryman. Um, obviously there is an association here with movement, transition. It's actually kind of similar to the Six of Swords, I feel. Um, in the sense that, you know, this is about like moving forward and in some cases like entering into calmer waters. Um, hold on, give me one second. Okay, okay. Um, interesting, interesting. So I feel like for you guys, group three, um, first of all, it seems to me like well, maybe not. Okay, I was gonna say it, it feels like for a lot of you, this is probably a relatively new connection, although thinking about it a bit more, I'm not sure if that's actually the case. You know, for some of you, this will be something relatively new. Um, for others of you, though, it may not be, and it may just be a situation where, like, this could be somebody from your past that you've recently reconnected with or that you've recently started thinking about again, something like that. Um, hopefully that resonates with you somehow. Um, I just get the sense that, like, you and this person maybe haven't had a lot of time to really get to know each other or, you know, maybe a lot of time has elapsed that you've been apart and so you know, things have changed and you're not really sure like exactly where the other person is at in their life or in what ways they have changed. Um, but I feel like, I feel like this person has been thinking of you a lot in the last several weeks, months, possibly. Um, Actually, I mentioned that this could be somebody from your past. This Oracle card plus this um, Six of Swords would sort of make sense with that, you know, being like a reconciliation or like you coming back together with this person, reconnecting with this person in some way. Anyhow, um, yeah, this person has been thinking about you a lot in the last few weeks or months even. Um, they... With its three of wands being here, I'm seeing that they have kind of been fantasizing or like daydreaming about their connection to you or about a relationship with you. Um, you know, thinking about like the potential between the two of you, like what you guys could possibly achieve in a relationship together, where a relationship with you might go. Um, I do feel like they've probably been daydreaming about like 
having a physical relationship with you as well. Uh, you know, this is the Tarot of Sexual Magic, so I guess that makes sense <laughs> that that energy is coming through here as well. Um, but yeah, just in general, I feel like they've been daydreaming a lot about you, about getting back in touch with you or reconnecting with you in some meaningful way. Um, I actually get the sense that... For a lot of you, you maybe haven't actually had much contact with this person recently. Like, maybe you've been thinking about them, but you haven't, like, actually reached out to them, and they haven't reached out to you in the recent past, but they are also thinking about you. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Because, and, and I say that because... With the Ace of Swords being here, I get the sense that they want to send you a message. I get the sense that they want to communicate with you somehow. Um, they want to reconnect. They want to, like, come towards you and just kind of, like, see what you're up to, see what you've been doing, see if you are receptive to having them, you know, come come towards you or come back into your life, whatever the case may be. Um, the magician, again, this is like a new opportunity, some new fresh energy coming into the situation. So, like I said, again, I, I see this as them wanting to initiate something and, and start something new here. Okay, is this making sense? Um, I really feel like you have a pretty significant like soul level connection to this person like this seems to be probably a soulmate situation um and it feels like for them it's it's like all of a sudden it's like one day they just woke up and you were on their mind and you've been on their mind ever since and they've been fixated on, like, their feelings towards you ever since. Um, I think they've been looking back a lot on, like, what, what interactions you had in the past or, like, the relationship that you maybe had in the past, whatever. Um, they're feeling a lot of fondness and a lot of affectionate feelings towards you you know, based on what they remember of you or based on what they have seen of you. And, you know, again, there's a couple different possibilities that I'm getting with, with this situation that might be going on. So just kind of take it how it resonates with you. Um, but I do feel for a lot of you, this is probably somebody from your past to, in some way or another. Um... I'm feeling, yeah, it's like one day they just woke up and it was like, I miss you. I think I want to get back in touch with you. And it was kind of a shock to them because it was like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? Why am I feeling such an attachment to this person all of a sudden? Or like, why are these emotions resurfacing for me all of a sudden? You know, something like that. Um, and I feel like it kind of took them by surprise and maybe shook them up a little bit because they, they, it, it seems to me like they might be kind of thinking right now, like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I don't know why I'm feeling the, I don't know why I'm feeling you energetically. I don't know why I'm thinking about you so much. I don't know why my emotions for you have, have come back to the surface. Does this make sense? <clears throat> But, but all of that has happened. And I really feel that this person would like an opportunity to come towards you and try to initiate something, like I said already. Um, they, they, they seem to be making plans to do that, to approach you in some way or reach out to you somehow. Um, 
they're not moving forward like super quickly here. It seems it's it's kind of like they're they're taking their time with moving towards you because they're kind of wondering like what, you know, what changes have happened since the last time you spoke or saw each other or whatever. Um it's like they just don't know specifically like what all is going on in your life right now and so they don't really know exactly like how receptive you might be to them coming towards you with this sort of like offer this intention of reconnecting getting to know you um and 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 like seeing where things go you know what i'm saying it's like they just feel very out of the loop when it comes to you and like what's going on in your life. And so I think to some extent, they're just kind of afraid that, you know, if they come towards you, they might find out that like, oh, you, oh you're already in a relationship or you're not looking for a relationship or, you know, you're married to your job or something, you know, something that would just kind of crush them or, or make them feel like it's hopeless. They don't want that. They don't want that to happen. Um, they want to be optimistic about this. They want, they want to, to feel that this could turn into something. Um, hmm. Okay. Group three, that's, really the extent of what I'm seeing here. Um, I feel like this, this one was maybe a little bit shorter than the others have been, but that's what I'm getting as far as like your person's head and heart space right now. Um, so if, if this energy is like similar to what you're feeling and what you're thinking about the situation, you know, you might want to think about making a move towards them. Like, like initiating something with them or reaching out to them first because I feel like they would be very happy if you did and I feel like that would really give them like the confirmation to like go ahead and and try to move forward with this um so yeah that's what I'm getting for you guys group three I hope that this resonated with you I hope this was interesting and that you enjoyed um all of my links are in the description below if you want to check them out. I do offer personal readings if that is something that you might be interested in. Um, and I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you all the best and I hope I see you next time. Bye!